Come chat with me. New York's number one Caribbean lifestyle magazine. Jamaica is a nice place to live. We have everything, the sunshine, the rivers, and the good Re and Navy rum. Come chat with me. Celebrating the rich culture of black comics at the 6th annual Black Comic Book Festival. We get closer with Egyptian, featuring Arita at BB King during Grammy Weekend in New York City. A Stone of Hope, a memoir by a young black man who himself was a lost cause until he landed in a rehabilitation program that Me saved his life and gave him purpose. We shine the spotlight on its author, Jim St. Jeremy, on this week's Community Spotlight. Bob Marley would have been 73 this year. Fans gathered for the 22nd annual birthday tribute. You're watching Come Chat With Me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine, and I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. Comic fans of all ages headed to the Schomburg Center for their sixth annual Black Comic Book Festival. Hi, my name is Deirdre Holman and I'm here at the Schomburg Center's sixth annual Black Comic Book Festival. I'm so proud to be one of the four founders of this festival here at the Schomburg, designed to celebrate independent black comic creators. I know many people are fans of comic books in the DC, Marvel world, Batman, Superman, Black Panther. But at this festival, we are celebrating independent creators. We're celebrating people like Kid Code and Maddie's Rocket and Ayanla, all of these really great artists, over 50 in the building from across the country, from Detroit, California, Atlanta, are here bringing their comic book stories to the people of New York City. We're talking about comics being literature, interesting, diverse stories for young people to read, but also for adult fans, comic books that were created by people who were loving what they were reading in the superhero comics, but wanted to create black stories. I'm a New York City native. Uh, I grew up in Far Rockaway. Uh, my family hails from the Caribbean, specifically Guyana. Today I'm at the Schomburg Center 6th Annual Black Comic Book Festival. Uh, I've written for Marvel Comics, Archie Comics, and Valiant, and today I am debuting my new series, Emancipated Black, which is about an African-American slave who's bitten by a vampire, and his skin turns the chalky white complexion of the vampire, and he has to pass himself off as a white man during the antebellum South of uh, the days of slavery. I've been reading comics since I was about 12 years old. Uh, I brought my three sons with me who also are into comics. And so I'm always excited about superheroes and being a part of something like this. And the fact that there are people of color makes it even better for me. I, I've always been a fan of Wonder Woman since I was a kid. Um, and the fact that this is her sister and she is, she looks like me. Um, I'm actually gonna frame it and put it in my office. Hey, what's going on, people? This is Sean Aline, repping Barbados. I'm here at the 6th Annual Schoenberg Black Comic Book Festival, uh, representing Pyroglyphic Studios and my people in Barbados. I was drawing since I was, uh, you know, I was drawing since I was a little boy. Um, always loved art, grew up on comic books, but um, comic books was a gateway into other things, into literature, into mythology. So I was always a big reader, a big sci-fi fan. So then, as the years went on, I kept uh, expressing myself through comic books. Um, then I had um, some major shifts in my life in art. I went, I came to America in 93, and I met these guys at a black comic book festival that were doing a black comic book festival in Philadelphia. And it was, that was the fifth year they was doing it. I didn't even know that it was around that long. And I called them instantly. I was like, look, one of don't know me, but I want to be a part of this, whatever it takes. And meeting those guys and then being more involved in black comic book culture, that's when my art started to take a change. So now it's important for me to reflect Nubian imagery within my art. So it, it's forever growing.
Hi, my name is Dejan Snee from Atlanta, Georgia, from Green County Creatives, my studio, and I produce a comic book called Sorghum and Spirit. So it's about four young girls who find out in their age of innocence that they're in charge of saving their world from an army of monsters that are set to end their civilization. So we have a fantasy series, uh, Afrocentric, and has Latin and Asian influences, but it showcases basically young girls in an Amazonian society, so there are no men. But it's a chance for us to concentrate on women, especially women of color, not just as a single brushstroke, but as a full palette of the, both the heroines and the villains, uh, the highs and lows of uh, fighting a war, and at the same time learning about, learning about your own choices and being the person you want to be. This is actually my first real convention. Uh, I get an opportunity to come here to Deschambeurg. I came as a fan last year um, as an aspiring uh, writer and author and saw just the amazing artwork and, and camaraderie of like a lot of the people that I looked up to in the industry were right here and right as being available. So I went home and got with my friends and we said, you know, next year we're going to be on the other side of the table. Heroes of Color which is an animated series, which is designed to help uh, promote different cultures and uh, outstanding achievements of people of color. Another series of work that I'm presenting here are just a multicultural artwork, again, just showing the diversity of the society that we live in. And, um, you know, it's just a creative way to try to get young people and adults to learn and appreciate other people's cultures, because I feel like the more we learn about each other, the more we learn about our neighbors, the easier it becomes to live within the same society. I'm black man, saving mankind one stereotype at a time. I'm fighting stereotypes because more people are alike than they are different. My name is Ori and we're at the Black Comic Con. <laughs> My name's Sadia and we're at the Black Comic Con Schomburg. My name is Orin, we're at I the Black My name is National and I'm at the Black Comic Con. My name is Gillian Bell from the Urban Yoga Foundation and we are at the Schomburg Museum of Black Culture and Art, learning so many things, sharing heritage, culture, diversity, and much needed education for our wonderful young people. My art is a nice mix of anime, manga influence, and western cartooniness and lots of bright colors and lots of pink because I just love soft, fluffy pink stuff. I've been making art for many, many years now. I'm about to turn 29 and I've been drawing since grade school and just absolutely in love with comics since I discovered anime. And so I've been traveling around to different conventions throughout the country for about the past six years. And before that, I graduated from the School of Visual Arts with a BFA in cartooning. The first time I came to the Schaumburg for the Black Comic Book Festival was actually during year one. I was walking by, I'm a frequent uh, frequenter of the Schaumburg for different events, art exhibitions as a visual artist as well as, long, as well as a poet, doing research and one thing. So I walked by one day and I just, oh my God, it's a Black Comic Book Festival. So I walked in and I've been hooked ever since. Well, here we have a choose your own adventure style story that was created by me and a friend. It's done in the, that, well, it's, it's set to look like a dating sim almost because me and my friend we love playing these kinds of games so you can like pretty much go through and choose like your own path in the story so depending on what you pick like you know the ending will change and like you'll get different artwork and whatnot and if you want the super abridged version of the plot it is the murder mystery rom-com at a cookout that you never asked for usually a lot of things like start off with like a thought in my head like well I kind of want to do something that has like maybe like this thing and then I'll start like doodling before like I figure out like okay well you know maybe I want something with like a mermaid or like you know something like in space then I'll work from there. We're here to keep connected the people who are creating comic books and telling our stories with a community who craves those stories. During Grammy Weekend at BB King in New York City, Temple Live presented Egyptian featuring Aretha.
13 years now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite project so far? I mean, music itself, you know? Mm-hmm. Music itself, a passion, and I always want to do it. Mm-hmm. But do you have anything that you've done that really stands out? Because you've had songs that have run into the millions. What's your favorite Egyptian song? Serious Time, you know? Ah, yeah, These go. are some Serious Time because that's what really brought us on the forefront. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, yeah, quite a few. Serious Time. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that was your favorite because that was mine too. <laughs> Listen, tell us what you planned in the very near future. Yeah, right now the, the EP coming out. Yeah, and also we're promoting this one tonight. It's closer. Closer. Yeah, closer. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's what's up right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give us a hint about what closer really means? I really, it more, it's more like a, a fundamental thing. You know, girls in the gym working, you know, or girls in the party, like you're jamming in your car mm -hmm. by yourself. It's just a vibrant song. It's a mm -hmm. vibrant thing. Once it's on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. y'all broke out when they hear bad song. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, well, it's a, it sounds like another girl song, and you're very popular with the ladies. When I looked out in the audience tonight, I see 95% women there, so I know they're definitely here to see you. I said, with me, baby, you don't need to worry. She said, oh, 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 where do you see yourself in two years? A lot, a lot of work, we just hope. Because we're time serious right now. Mm -hmm. You have to hope serious it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, but right now, two years, I mean, we're still going to be doing music, touring, mm -hmm. and more things will blossom then. Mm -hmm. Well, know? speaking of tours, what tours do you have coming up? All over. Like from the year start to the year finish to the next year, so yeah. the manager them can't give up and not run up because you just go like a robot. You know? <laughs> so you just show up and do your thing? Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Once the manager said there, I'll be mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to let the Come Chat With Me audience know that we don't already know about you? I don't swim. <laughs> and I don't intend to. And you're from the Caribbean? Don't watch that. <laughs> Just don't swim, you know? Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Yeah, man, but you don't know, you can't do steal all the thing. You have a company in New York, no one yes. there. You can't just uh, use it like it's the only spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but you don't know how to be a stem, so big up New York again. You're there tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Egyptian. Yeah, girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, titty. Oh, it's so fun. Tick-tock fun. Baby, drop the leg back. And then move slow to it. Cause I see it right there from the sun. Oh, I want it to point slow from cheap top from baby drop it like that. And then move slow to it. Cause I see it right there from the sun. Cause when you dress up in your two piece on your shot shot spank, do you really look good? I got to ask you, beautiful girls, I wanna use for the skin on the skin so smooth. So when you dress up in your two piece, you shot shots, baby, you really look good. I got to ask you all what you use to make me come out looking so pretty and too smooth. Plot preparing leaders of tomorrow a non-profit organization that provides mentoring to at-risk youth. We chat with co-founder and a stone of hope, author Jim St. Germain. My name is Jim St. Germain. Uh, I, was, I was born in Haiti and uh, I moved here to the States when I was approximately 11 years old. Just, you know, for the same reasons that most people are here and just seeking a better life, I'm seeking more opportunities. I moved into Crown Heights, Brooklyn at the time and it was pre-gentrification, it was a pretty rough and um, economically depressed community and as a young man I had to maneuver around a lot of these challenges and obstacles and unfortunately I also was caught up in the streets so I started to hustle 
uh, at a very young age, which then led me into being in contact with law enforcement officials, and um, which then led me into the juvenile justice system where I spent about three years. And that's where my journey changed based on the people that I met, the individuals I met who um, realized that I was more than my circumstances. Through that journey, I ended up leaving the streets alone and um, going and get my GED and started college and graduated college. I went to John Jay where I received my bachelor's in political science and then I went on to grad school at NYU where I started. I'm not quite done yet, but I'm still on a journey to finish my master's now. Eventually I went back to the same facility I was incarcerated in as a young man and started to work in there with the youngsters. They were sort of like a product of their circumstances and and, and they had to deal with a 400 year history of oppression, right? Most of these kids were black and brown kids, so there was a history that preceded them, which then caused them to be in the situations that they were in um, that many of them weren't aware of, and they didn't have the word though and the mental capacity to understand that history. So I set out to try to use my journey and my life as a, as a guide to make some changes in, in, in my community. The book came out in 2017. I've been pushing that. I'm still going around and promoting the book. I have a few cities coming up. Uh, so that's important to me. I'm also speaking to production companies who are interested in buying the book to turn it into a movie or a documentary. Can you talk about your profession? Well, I, I, I'll tell you this. I'm actually not a fan of profession. So I'm going to rephrase that question. Okay. Um, I would change that to what's my purpose. I think your profession is what you sometimes go to school for um, with the understanding that the school system itself was designed to produce people who can do the very particular job that the system want them to do. Um, I view my purpose as something that's bigger, right? So my purpose is to uplift my community and uplift particularly young people. I believe they are our greatest treasure and I believe as a father that is even more um, urgent for me to understand so I would say that my purpose is to speak truth to power to work with policy makers and business leaders and community members as a way of improving the circumstances that many of our young people find themselves in. PLOT, P-L-O-T, stands for Preparing Leaders of Tomorrow. Uh, PLOT was founded by myself and a brother of mine, uh, Raymond Edwin, who is a police officer now. And, you know, it, was, it came out of a place of love and a desire to leave a better community than the one we found. We've been fortunate enough with so many of my friends who are family to me who decided that they're going to help us move the ball forward. I think that most of the things I've accomplished in my life and that I have now, which are a lot of things considered where I came from, came from me showing appreciation to people for the smallest thing they've done for me. I think people are willing to fight harder for you. They're willing to give you, give you more opportunities if they know that you appreciate it. But not only that you're thankful, but you're willing to pass on your blessings, right? You're not just holding things to yourself. And I think the more you do that in life, the more things come to you. I think there was a notion that we have to be like crab in a barrel. Um, as a people, and I understand when resources are scarce, when we don't have much, because again, historically, we've been kept away from success systemically, sometimes you end up fighting over crumbs. But the reality is that we don't win like that, right? That's why a lot of times we end up destroying each other for nothing. Um, for me, if I use my candle to light up yours, mine still burns. Right? As a matter of fact, it's even better now because we have two candles burning. And so that's my philosophy in life. And I think if you continue to do those things, lessons will continue to come. And that's, that has worked for me.
twenty second annual birthday tribute. Are we there? We're running to hope. Okay, my Lovely Keisha Martin. Yes, yes, yes. Where you going, my friend? They are now enjoying the full joy and the vibes. The, re the great, late, great Robert Nesta Marley Burstrong. Every year we're there supporting. Yeah. Big up CCB band and the whole family. Always a great vibe. The house is like cock and the vibes, the energy is up. So we're there. You see me? So where is Bob Marley? See? You? What Keisha Martin thing? Where is Bob Marley? Where is it? Where is it? What comes to your mind? And the music and them things there. The revolution will not be televised. And that was say. He set the thing. And guess what? Music. The rebellious music. Rebel music. And that comes to mind when I think about Bob Marley. Sure. And you know, it, it feeds the people and them soul. Ribbon, what go on? Today I'm a brother. Today I know in that place, you know, Bob Marley, um, birthday. Yeah, man. And trust me, the vibes was nice. It's a fast show for going all about as a as a um, a lover of Bob Marley music. Musical journey to travel around the world. I see Bob Marley's influence. Cause you know Bob Marley's celebration everywhere. Yeah, man. We there. I'm running to Ross Japan at the house tonight. I don't know. You know, man. What, what, big man? Yeah, give time, give time. Bless up, you know. Very. Yeah, yeah, it is a special occasion tonight, you know. Yes, sir. See, yeah, you know about it. I mean, man. Let me not perform. Alright, sir. I'm Bob Marley there, you know? Yeah. I heard strong and everything, you know? For real, man. Somebody out with a vibe, you know? CC, you know? See? So, you know, just try greatness, you know? Let's try greatness. <laughs> Chat with me, New York's number one Caribbean lifestyle magazine. Jamaica is a nice place to live. We have everything, the sunshine, the rivers, and the good Re and Nevio Rum. Come chat with me. Thanks for watching. Come chat with me. Tune in each and every Sunday right here on CIN. See you next week. Simply Kills.